Dana from MadeEveryday.com and today I want to talk to you about knit ribbon fabric and how to attach it to a sweatshirt or a t-shirt. Ribbing is a fabric that you would sew into the opening areas of a garment, such as on a sweatshirt or a t-shirt, you would sew it around the neckline, around the sleeve cuffs, the bottom, around the pockets. And it's called ribbing because it has these little ribs in it that allow the fabric to expand as it goes over your head as you put the garment on and then contract back so that it sits nice and snug around your neck. I got these at my local Joanne Fabric and Craft Store and they have a nice selection there of neutral colors that go really great with a variety of different sweatshirt fabrics and fleece, t-shirt fabrics, things like that. And I have to admit, when I first started sewing, I thought that ribbing was sold in these little pre-cut packages like you would buy bias tape because typically you are sewing a small strip of ribbing. And then it dawned on me one day when I walked by all these bolts of ribbing, oh my gosh, this is what ribbing is. You buy it by the yard. And sometimes I buy just a quarter of a yard, a half a yard. You don't need a lot for a sweatshirt or a t-shirt. So now let me show you some fleece fabric that we're gonna use. Here's a stack of fleece fabrics that I also purchased at my local Joanne store. And really, is there a better spot to find adorable fleece prints? I just walk down the aisles and it's like eye candy jumping out at you. I also love even these simple plain ones that have kind of like a heathered look to it. So many fun designs and prints. And it's actually what inspired me to create the pattern that I'm using today for this project. It's called the Everyday Sweatshirt. You can find it on my website, go to madeeveryday.com. Or you could use your own pattern or your own t-shirt pattern. It's gonna be the same concept for what we're doing. You can also find it, Joanne, standard sweatshirt fabric that has a little bit of fleece on the back. There are a lot of different options. Okay, so let's cut out our ribbing fabric. I'm sewing the sweatshirt for my daughter, and what I wanna show you is how to attach just the ribbing pieces. So I'll show you the cuffs at the sleeves and at the neckline. Now the best way to cut ribbing is to use a cutting mat and rotary cutter and a ruler. That will give you a really nice straight line. And what you wanna remember with ribbing is that you need the piece of ribbing to be slightly smaller than the space that it's going to occupy so that it kind of keeps it tight around your wrist. So refer to your pattern and you'll know exactly how much you should cut for the dimensions of your sweatshirt or your t-shirt. For mine, I need to cut 6.75 inches by 3.5 inches. So I actually have a few layers here. I'm just folding this over and I'm going to need two sleeve cuffs. So that will be perfect. I'll have plenty of ribbing to work with. So first I'm just gonna cut kind of a straight edge and I'm pressing firmly on my ruler and on my rotary cutter just to make sure I get through all those layers. Ah, okay. <laughs> okay, there we go. And then we're gonna measure over, what did I say, 3.5. One, two, three and a half. And we'll cut that piece. There we go. And then we want it to be 6.75 inches long. Right there. Okay, I'm gonna cut that right there. Okay, now you can see if I hold this to this, it is smaller than the space that we need. What I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna press this in half and then we're gonna go to our sewing machine. Okay, I've got my sleeve piece here and I've got my cuff that we just folded in half. Now when you're sewing with knits, it's really important that you select a stitch that will stretch with your fabric. Otherwise it will break the first time you put it on and stretch the fabric. So I am selecting a zigzag stitch, which pretty much comes standard with every machine. And I'm gonna also increase my stitch length just a little bit to like, I don't know, a two. You could pin this in place, but it's a small area that we're sewing. So I'm just gonna go straight to my machine. And I'm lining up the end of the ribbing with the end of the sleeve there. And I'm using white thread because I want you to be able to see how the stitch looks, but you would probably wanna use a thread color that coordinates with your fabric so you don't see it. Okay, now what we wanna do is we're gonna stretch this fabric to the end of our sleeve here so that as we sew, it's evenly distributed throughout. And the more you sew these projects, the more you'll get used to how ribbing reacts and how it stretches and how really stretchy fabric works versus slightly stretchy. Cause like I said, every ribbing and every knit is totally different. It's quite a different concept than sewing with standard quilting cotton and fabrics that are woven. Okay, do a forward and back stitch at the beginning and then start sewing down. You don't wanna stretch the fabric that's underneath, you're just stretching the fabric on top. And 
get to the end, do another back stitch. And then I'll show you what the stitch looks like. You can see that it made those little zigzag stitches and what that's gonna allow is for it to stretch as we put this on. Perfect. Now you'd wanna press this flat with an iron, just like that, or you can go straight to your machine. We're gonna sew a top stitch, another zigzag stitch right on top of that, and that just helps it lay more flat and it looks kind of professional. Sometimes you have to kind of get it going at the beginning. There you go. Okay, now this time I don't really need to stretch the fabric because it has already been stretched. So I'm just kind of helping my fabric go through. I'm not tugging or anything like that. And again, I'm using white. You don't want to use white. Well, maybe you do want to use white. Sometimes it's fun to have a contrasting thread color and then it kind of shows up. Okay, let me show you what this looks like. There you go. Now we have our top stitch there. And mine is kind of a little bit wobbly, but if you press it with your iron, it's gonna look nice and flat. So you'd want to do the same thing with your other sleeve piece and then your sleeves are ready to go. Now let's talk about the neckline. Okay, we're ready to sew our neckline and I've already prepped a couple steps here. I have cut out my ribbing for the neck for the specifications of my pattern and I've already pressed it in half lengthwise. For the sweatshirt pieces, I've cut out my front and back and I've only sewn them together at the shoulder seams so that I've created a little neck opening for us to sew the ribbing. So we'll set that down, take your ribbing and unfold what you already pressed and then fold it in half the other direction with right sides together. So that means that the two creased areas are now touching each other. And we're going to sew right down this side to make a little neck band. And I know what you're thinking, this looks really small, but trust me, as we sew it and as it stretches, it will fit perfectly inside. And if it doesn't, then you learn something new and the next time you make improvements. I know I keep reinforcing this whole adventure aspect of knits, but it's very true. Okay, come over here, forward and back stitch. Okay, and sew right down. Okay, now fold this back over and it will hide this little seam that we just made right along that crease that we pressed earlier. Okay, and there you go. You can see that this is going to go right inside of our neckline opening. So open this up, and you wanna make sure that you have the right side facing up. We're gonna pin right sides together. Then take your little neckline cuff, and I like to start in the back. So I take that seam that I sewed and center it right in the back of the neckline, like that. And then I'm gonna place a pin right there. And then I'm gonna stretch it across to the middle of the front of the neckline and place a pin right there. And then we'll go to the sides. You just wanna keep cutting all the distances in half. Stretch this over to the side. And what I like to do here, because sometimes the front of the neckline is a little bit longer than the back, I actually kind of hold my hands up. If I can do this without getting poked with pins. And I stretch it out a little so that I can see exactly where this seam of the shoulder should match up right about there. Okay, pin that in place. And then just keep cutting these distances in half. Place one more pin right here. And you don't have to be too excessive like I am being with my pins. You could stop and just do four pins and stretch as you go. But if you're a beginner, this might help a little bit. Okay, now we're gonna do the side over here. Again, I'm stretching all the way so I can see where that shoulder seam is right there. Okay, now it can be a little tricky sewing this with all these pins, but just do your best. <laughs> okay, now let's go back to our machine. And I'm using the same zigzag stitch that I used before. Do a forward and back stitch. And then, it's nice that you have these pins because you can work section to section without having to stretch the whole thing at once. So I'm gonna start in my first little area here and just make sure that it's stretched, meaning the ribbing is stretched so that it is taut with the fabric underneath. You don't want to stretch the fabric under, just the top layer. Okay, and then when I get to my next pin, I remove that, and then I work on the next section. We'll stretch that little area and sew around. And if you find that sewing in a circle like this is too difficult for you, there's always more than one way to sew something, as I'm always telling you. You could choose to only sew one of your shoulder seams, then attach your ribbing so that it's in more of a straight line, kind of, and then sew your other shoulder seam. So 
you know, just experiment and see what you like and what works for you. Okay, I'm almost back to the beginning here. Let's see how it looks. Okay, there you go. It is already looking, well, pretty awesome. You wanna press this flat with your iron so that it gets nice and smooth. And when you're working with fleece, it's always important to do a test on your fabric before you just press your iron right on top. Some fleeces are synthetic and might have a tendency to melt or just always do a test first, just to make sure. So press that with your iron, and then we're gonna go back and we're gonna sew another top stitch just like we did with our sleeve cuff, also using a zigzag stitch, and that will help it lay really nice. Okay, stick this under, and I want the seam part to be sticking out so that as I sew the top stitch, I'm sewing that seam part kind of in place. It helps everything lay really nice. I'm also lining up my presser foot with the edge right here, and that will just give me a nice snug line that looks nice and keeps me in place the whole way around. Okay, do a back stitch. There we go. And again, I'm using white thread here. You might want to choose a different thread color. Try your best, again, not to stretch this while you're going. The ribbing is already in place and stretched, and if you stretch it too much, it's gonna make your neckline look a little bit wonky. Okay, I'm back to the beginning here. Let's finish it off, and then let's go press it with our iron. Now I'm pressing out my sleeve cuff here with my iron, so it's nice and smooth, and then I'm gonna press the neckline as well. And you would do this for both of your sleeves. This will just make it lay really nicely. And if anything is lettucing up or kind of ripply, this helps it lay flat. Let's do the other side as well. Okay, and then as you can see, look at that. That looks really awesome. It can stretch as my daughter puts it on over her head really well and yet it stays nice and tight around her neck. Now, to finish this off, you would use whatever is outlined in your pattern to sew the rest of your sweatshirt. I would take my two sleeve pieces. You can see how they attach right into these spots, right here. And if you want more info on that, you can check out my t-shirt video. I show you all the steps to how to do this. And then, when you're all done sewing, you've got a cute little sweatshirt. There are so many fun ways to make a sweatshirt or a t-shirt, to add pockets, do so many different things. Have fun and just enjoy the adventure. For more ideas and tutorials, visit my website, madeeveryday.com. And for fleece, ribbing, and other sewing needs, go to your local Joanne Fabric and Craft Store or check out joanne.com. I'll see you next time, bye.